Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. Now this is a rather magnificent piece of ash. It's uh, quite big, quite heavy, but it's also nice and dry and ready to do something with. Now, when I first got this piece, initial thoughts were, mark out a nice ball in here, and then cut it out, turn it, maybe blacken the outside, maybe burn it, and then have a beautiful finish on the inside. But then I noticed that as it's a crotch piece or the edge of a crotch piece over here, we've got some absolutely amazing grain that if we were to go with the first idea, we're gonna lose. So I'm gonna try and turn something and keep as much of this as I can. So the best thing to do is a sort of wing bowl, which I've done a few of before, but this one is going to be finished in a very different way so stick around for that. Now, corner to corner is over 19 inches. I only, only turn 18 over the bed. Uh, and because it's so heavy and big, it's five inches thick at least, there's no way I'm gonna turn this outboard. It just wouldn't be safe. I need the tailstock support. So, some of this has to go. Now, we know we want to keep that. So the bit that has to go is from this end. So at the moment we have 19 and a half inches from that corner to that corner and I can turn a maximum of 18 inches corner to corner. Right, if I give myself a little bit of room for error I mark it at 17 and a half and then where do I take it to? I think I'll try and get as much keep as much of this wood as I can. So I'll draw a line from 17 and a half inches across up to that corner. We'll cut off that and then we'll make a start. Okay, back in a second. Okay, chopped off that corner. So that's given us now a, a nice usable size blank that we can fit onto the lathe happily. Right, next question is where should I put the centre? Where's the centre going to be? So. Initial thoughts are around there. And I'm going to be mounting this with a face plate. So, worm screw should be okay, but I want to try and be as safe as I possibly can, so we are going to go with a face plate. Right, let's get this in position. We we'll get it screwed on. We can move it again if we need to. We'll see how this goes. That at the moment looks remarkably balanced, but we're going to find out in a second. Okay, so we give this a little spin up to see how balanced it is or it isn't. So we've got a control panel to this side, so we've got easy access to it. Oh wow. All right, that's turning at about 530. That is absolutely fine for us to get started. <laughs> Yay! Right, I'm going to go and sharpen up and we shall begin. Okay, sharpened up. Got my face shield ready. My sleeves are well tied back. And we're all ready. Right, I'm going to start working away at this surface, getting off some of this bark and start working my way up the edge. And we'll see what the wood's like underneath here. there. The wood looks nice and clean. No rot. And take this down a little bit further and then I'll take out the tailstock, just chisel off this uh, bit of bark here and then put the centre back in but I'll 
go a bit further first before I do that. Extremities on here are proving to be a bit of a pain because they're really, really hard wood. And as you're only cutting it occasionally, it's uh, making a nasty sound on the gouge. I think the best way to combat that is to start creating the bowl in these areas and start going straight outwards as opposed to trying to cut into it that way. We'll just feather it out slowly that way. So let's worry about the bowl bit first. see from this angle here the best bit of figure is kind of along that line so that's where I want the top of the wing to be so the bottom of the wing That's my the points I'm aiming for. Top of the wing, bottom of the wing. Right, so we'll leave these marks in nice and clear so we can see them. This isn't going to be as easy as I first thought. take this edge in now until all of this is being cut because of what I'm wanting to do to the bottom I do not want any bark on it I know it looks nice we all know that bark is a nice natural thing to leave on a bowl but not in this case Still got a little bit there, but that's fine. We've still got a bit here, which we need to get rid of. But we'll do that when we're creating the foot and the recess. But apart from that, it's going pretty well. Okay, back from lunch. I have two jobs to do next. Is I've got to sort out this edge here because as I was cutting this further in, I've just got a small delve in here, so I've got to flatten this off. And I'll do that first before we start putting the recess in.
final deal yet, but it's, it's made from moving around so much with this now being out of uh, balance quite a bit. Maybe the best I can get. Right, I'm going to start working on creating a foot, tidying up this side, and then we're getting very close to sanding. done so we can start sanding. I'll let you watch the start and I shall bring you back at the end. sanding to get it this far. They're great fun to make these but they are not fun to sand. This is just a bit of isopropyl alcohol just to clean out all the, the grooves and stuff, all the grain. You can use denatured alcohol, it's very similar stuff. It's just that I use this because it's cheaper for me to get hold of in the UK. Give it a chance to evaporate. Now it was initially my intention to burn the bottom of this, scrape it back to give us a texture and then dye it black to give it a wonderful kind of feeling on the bottom. But we have some very different grain on here. We've got the incredibly tight grain that you normally expect with ash and it goes in very, very narrow. And I think those kind of differences will just look a bit odd. So we're just gonna go for a paint effect instead. I'm gonna start off by putting a black base on the bottom. I'm using the, uh, the spirit stain from Chestnuts. It's a, an alcohol-based stain that shouldn't raise the grain when we put it on. When I do put it on, I am gonna try and keep it off the bark. Okay, I'm not sure exactly how long this bark's going to stay on for, but it's done pretty well so far. So it may as well stay on. See if we can keep it on there till the end. So anyway, when I put the black on, if it looks great, then we'll just go ahead and leave it at that. If it still needs a bit more, then we'll either go on with more black to thicken it up, or we'll rub back a few different areas and highlight it with red. I know. I don't know if it'll work either. I just want to make a stark difference between the top and the bottom of this bowl to try and make it stand out as much as possible. Okay. I have to get it onto the sides without getting it onto the bark. I'm okay up to that top edge. It's the top bit I don't want to get onto. Okay, now we'll let this dry for a little bit. 
and then figure out if we're doing more or if we're going with a red. Okay, go away then. Okay, that's a little while to dry now. I think what I'm going to do is just give it a good skim over with a, a 600 grit buffing pad and then put the red over the top and see how that looks. We can always take it all off and start again if we have to. Okay, let's try the red on the top. Okay, actually don't mind that at all. Right, well, give it a chance to dry, and then we'll put a finish over the top, and then turn it around. Okay, that's had a nice time to dry. I did spend a bit of time re-sanding and finishing this area here, because when you put a dark dye on, any sanding imperfections become blatantly obvious, so I did do that again. Uh, now we're going to go on with a blonde shellac sealer just to help protect the colour make it shine a little bit when this is dry I'll cut it back with a bit of abrasive paste and then we'll go on with a, a slightly higher concentrate of uh, shellac this is only a 10% I'll put a bit on this bark as well just to help protect that. We may lose it, but if you can keep it, that would be fantastic. This will probably take two or three coats of the sealer. Okay, so a good while to sit and dry. So going on with the True Grit Abrasive paste. This will lighten it a little bit as well, but it also gives gives a nice shiny finish. <laughs> Clean up that. A bit more isopropyl. Right, and for a nice natural finish, I'm going to use uh, the beeswax and mineral oil we made up a few months ago. If you want to know how to make this, then if you look at the video in which I make some shot glasses out of oak. And you'll see the full guide on how to do it there. But it's a nice waterproofing finish and it's food safe as well. I should buff this in. Okay, right, let's turn this around and do something different to the outside. Okay, we're nicely turned around. Main order of business first is to get some weight out of these wings to make it safe to turn and then start creating the bowl. So I'm going to take a few passes across, get this nice and level. We'll mark out where the bowl needs to be, then work the wings in towards that and then we can start hollowing out. But first of all, Shuffle up. Right, I'm just going to put a glove on my left hand because some of these bits I'm clipping off this edge really start to sting a little bit. got a 
about three quarters of an inch to go down. So I'll just keep on going across until we're, we've got the whole surface flat. And then we can lock out the bowl and take the wings down further. Should do it. So I think right our bowl. That's the outside of our bowl. So the inside needs to be around there. Excellent. Right, there's our marks. So we're going to start working in this edge. We're taking this down, getting the weight out of it, but obviously stopping at that outside point. This may give us a few problems, but I'm not particularly worried about it yet. There's no other cracks running this way, so it should hold firm, I would imagine. This line here is the original pith of the tree, so We'll be going past that, but we may have problems with it on this edge, so we'll see what we do about that a little bit later. Right, I've still got about, yeah, about half an inch to take this wing down. catch. That will lead us into a slight design alteration. Okay the wings are about there I think. So I'm just going to slightly alter the shape of this lip to allow for those uh, that feature we'll call it. Excellent. Right. Okay. Let's start hollowing this out. to pick up the speed of it which is good. So if we sharpen up again we should continue. It's a very long way to the bottom this bowl. Right, I'm going to go and sharpen up again, and then we're going to start thinking about taking the tailstock away so I can get into the bottom. Because I'm starting to, I can't get in here steep enough to make this cut to widen this side with that in the way. I also need to start angling the tail rest more inwards to give the gouge more support. Okay, with that out of the way, we can 
setup. O2 rest a bit better. So we can get out of this. on to the hope hollowing tool so I, I need to go and shape my sharpen my uh, my scraper but I'll do that in a second I just wanted to see how that would get on and it's, it's creating a nice little undercut it's doing well for us so I'm going to continue with this for a little bit longer and just get underneath these difficult areas where I can't really get with the ball gouge passes of the uh, the hope around here and I shall sharpen up my scraper and finish this off inside and then we'll worry about the lip and then we can sand. I shall set up for sanding. As usual, I shall let you watch a little bit and I'll bring you back at the end. Sanding went absolutely marvellously for hours and hours. Right, when I put on the shellac, I, I tried to put on the other side. I'm just going to brush it on. Again, we're going to put it onto the bark. I'm glad this bark stayed on. Just, I'm putting on the edges first, so I just want to make sure that I don't one of the shellac runs around the outside into the bowl into the back of the bowl, sorry <laughs> I am so pleased we kept this bit and didn't just turn it into an old blank we'll talk more about that at the end Okay, all right, we'll let this dry for a little while. And then we shall come back. Well, I'll put another coat on. I'll bring it back and we'll cut this back with an abrasive paste. And then we'll put the finish on. Okay, we've got two coats of shellac on here now. So I'm just gonna put on the abrasive paste. And we'll buff it up to a nice shine, ready for the final finish. the excess as usual with isopropyl. So 
let it evaporate. It will not take long. And then finally on with our mineral oil and beeswax finish. I'll rub this in. Okay, I'll rub the corners, then we'll take a look at what we've done. Well, there we go. One rather large, but beautiful ash natural edge bowl. It was never my intention to do a wing bowl, but because of the grain we had on this side, it seems such a shame to just cut it and throw it away. I want to really be in much on that corner that we'd cut off to do an awful lot with. So it just made sense to try and make the most of this we possibly could. And I'm really pleased we struggled along with it. I don't know why I keep on turning things which are so out of balance, but it just seems to be the way things are going. The grain in this wood is just fantastic. We've got the normal grain that you'd expect to see on ash, which is nice enough and on its own, but when you start mixing in kind of a crotch area here, then it just becomes absolutely phenomenal. The kind of feathering that's going on in this area is just absolutely beautiful. I'll put a beauty shot at the end, and I always add images, uh, lots more images, to my Instagram and Facebook accounts and Kofi account as well, so please make sure you check those out. The colouring, the colouring went well. I am getting better at it. Still not great yet, but I am definitely getting better. But that kind of contrast between the bottom and the top, uh, I've had it sat on the, on the sideboard in the house and it looks fantastic because this kind of almost disappears into the woodwork and the background, just leaving this beautiful top on show. Anyway, if you've enjoyed the video, I would really appreciate a like and subscribe and all those kind of things. And if you leave a comment as well, then you're going to be entered into the giveaway, uh, the prize for which is going to be given away this Thursday. Uh, and the prize, in case you're not familiar, is... We've got two prizes this time. The first one is this uh, soapstone uh, bowl we made a couple of weeks ago. And the second prize is a bowl turning set kindly given to us by Record Power. So there's going to be two prizes, so two opportunities to win. So to be in with a chance of winning these, all you have to do is leave a comment below. If you leave a comment on any of the videos we've made since the last giveaway, then you're automatically going to be entered. The more time you comment, the more chances you have of winning. Anyway, that's it for this week. I hope you've enjoyed it. And I shall see you next time. Thank you.